We live in a world of uncertainties, and yet we want to capture somehow certainty in the middle of uncertainties. It doesn't matter whether you are talking about gambling or statistics or genetics or financial issues or in physics. A more general name is Monte Carlo simulations. So Excel is a great tool to get some certainty in this world of uncertainty. I will use this video to show you an example how Excel can help us to solve a problem in genetics. And the problem I'm talking about is genetic drift. Say we have two alleles, capital A and lower case A, and the allele capital A is 60% 60 60 of the population and the other one is 40% of the population. So the capital A capital A will be 36% and the lowercase a a a or homozygotes is 16% and the two heterozygotes are 24% each. So what is going to happen in a population to these homozygotes homozygotes to those two heterozygotes and this homozygote so we, um, we use calculations. These three guys refer to this one, this one plus that one, and finally the, the fourth one. And then we are going to let randomness kick in. So in this case, we use the norm inverse function. And the probability is based on a random number between 0 and 1, but around the mean B8, that was the previous generation frequency, and a standard devi deviation, let's say 0.02, that is the uncertainty in all these events. And then we calculate the next one. It says if there is an error, then don't show us anything, but otherwise take 2 times the square root of B9 times 1 minus the square root of B9, that is genetics. And there the last one is a similar story. And we copy that formula down all the way for 100 generations. And we plot the results in this chart. So each time we recalculate these uncertainties, we get very different patterns all the time. There is some predictability in it, of course. After the next generation, you can almost predict that it will be close to the previous one. But there will be a margin, in this case of 0.02. And when we rerun this with F9, F9, you see that we could end up after 100 generations with very different frequencies. It's almost like a piece of art. Simulations can be very funny. They give you a lot of fun and yet at the same time they show you the role of uncertainty in life. Genetic drift is an example of this. And though we start always at the same point here, that is B8 C8 and D8, based on 60% for allele capital A and 40% for allele lowercase a, we get very different outcomes after 100 generations. Let's say we would like to repeat this 10 more times, these 100 generations, and see what happens each time. So I'm going to show a new kind of table, and I plot in here the percentages after 100 generations. So this one is a reference to the cell B108. Let me show you where that is located. Somewhere here. The last three cells tell you what the end result is after 100 generations. And we plot that way on top, a reference to those cells. I'm going to hide that column for a moment. And how can we rerun these 100 generation results another 
20 times. We create what they call a what-if analysis with data tables. You select from the origin the entire range, includes the references way on top and include an empty column here that has nothing in it, but sometimes you want something in there. In this case, we don't. And we are going to do a what-if analysis, data, what-if analysis with a data table. A data table is a very powerful tool in Excel that most people are not aware of. And all it needs to know is what is in the row input. Nothing, because I have already selected these cells. And for the column input cells, we have to refer to a blank cell somewhere. Let's say uh, O2. And at the moment we click on OK, we will see that it runs 20 more times those 100 generation results. And they can be very different from each other, because I showed you before how often randomness can interfere with quite dramatic results. So if I keep rerunning all of this, I get very different results all the time. The, the graph only shows me the first run in columns A, B, C, and D. But then in this row, we repeat that again, and we repeat that again with different results. When you want to see what is in the background here, I will show you the formulas in the background here. It puts in there what they call an array function that uses the function table. You cannot type that function. It is not an existence function in Excel. Of course, it is in Excel, but it's not available for you to use. You have to do it through that menu. And it needs two arguments, optional sometimes. No argument for the first one, and the second argument, the cell O2 or P2 or whatever you want to use. So that was the end result there. So now I'm going to show in the next column, I'm going to find out whether we have a population where the heterozygote, sorry, where the homozygote lowercase a, lowercase a, dies out. It has already a low percentage, but it could finally end up nowhere. It can disappear from the population, that allele. And I did that in column A. All it does is, if T3, that is the frequency of the homozygote for the recessive allele, if that is less than 1%, then we say it is practically gone from the population. Otherwise, we don't put anything in there. And we copy that formula downwards, and it will show NA when there is no result anymore. Let's test out. In this case, the allele did not die out at all. It did not disappear from the population. In two simulations, it did in one simulation, etc. And sometimes it dies out very frequently, but again, that is a hit or miss situation. The chart only shows you the results for the first run. So if you want that for all 20, you need 20 charts, or you have, or you have to plot things 20 times in the same chart, what makes it very hard to read. This is definitely a simulation. It is a simulation for a statistical, for a genetical situation. It can also be done for other kind of situations. So in the book Excel simulations, I will show you how to make 80 different kinds of simulations, either in gambling, in statistics, genetics, in financial situations, in expansion kind of situations, like when you take medica medications, when the population pyramid changes, predator-prey cycles. Then we will do more specific Monte Carlo sim simulations. That name came from physicists, like Brownian motions, a traffic situation, market growth, 
then we will go into iterations and some extras that don't belong to any specific category here. You can find that book at genesispc.com and it gives you very clear explanations how to create that kind of simulations and it will give you ideas to create your own.